Welcome to episode 73 of the Mental Dietitian Podcast. I'm your host, Aaron Lynch Potter. This one's coming out a little later than it normally would. Just because I've had a week where I've needed to integrate. I had a uh, big experience over the weekend. Um, if you've been listening to the show, you know what I was exploring and experiencing. And one day I will talk about it. But for now, I'm still integrating some of the lessons I've learned. And it's going to take probably months and months and months. It was big. But moving on. Today's episode is about this book right here and a chapter in this book. This book is called The Untethered Soul by Michael Singer. It is probably one of the top three books I've ever read. It took me a long time to read it. Do you know why? Because I judged it. I was like, I had a lot of judgment towards the Lord's soul. I had a, judge, a lot of judgment towards anything to do in that realm. And now I'm just realizing that anything I have judgment towards is an is an invitation to explore why I have judgment towards those things, because it's usually the direction that I need to go. Any judgment or hate or disgust or anything like that needs to be explored about why you feel that way. And I'll see you next week. Sit with that for a bit. <laughs> But anyway, there's this chapter in here and it is absolutely fascinating. And I just, I love analogies and I really wanted to share it with you. And this chapter is called Removing Your Inner Thorn. And this is so good. I'm going to read part of this book and then I'm going to talk about it and really explore this. And hopefully while you listen to this, you can find what maybe your inner thorn is or thorns Plural. So imagine that you have a thorn in your arm that directly touches a nerve. When the thorn is touched, it's very painful because it hurts so much. The thorn is a serious problem. It's difficult to sleep because you roll over on it. It's hard to get close to people because they might touch it. It makes your daily life very difficult. You can't even go for a walk in the woods because you might brush the thorn against some branches. This thorn is a constant source of disturbance, and to solve the problem, you only have two choices. The first choice is to look at your situation and decide that since it's so disturbing that when things touch this thorn, you need to make sure that nothing touches this thorn. The second choice is to decide that since it's so disturbing that when things touch the thorn, you need to take out the thorn. Believe it or not, the effects of the choice you, you make will determine the course of the rest of your life. This is one of the core level structural decisions that lay the foundation for your future. That's all I really need to read from the book because I'm going to communicate the rest of you, rest of it to you. The rest of that chapter goes on that you have two choices. The first choice is you can do whatever you can to avoid anything touching that thorn. And the book goes on to speak about that you could build an apparatus that goes over your arm so that when you're walking through the woods or you're walking through outside, that nothing touches the thorn. There's also the, the problem of meeting a romantic partner. You can't have them touch the thorn because, I mean, imagine if you got close to them, you wouldn't want them to touch the thorn. So you make another apparatus which so you can get close to people and that same apparatus, you end up modifying it and making new prototypes so you can sleep in it. So nothing that thorn doesn't bother you when you sleep. So you get a good night's sleep. And then you think, you know what, this apparatus helped me so much. What if I shared this with other people that also have thorns in their arm that are touching a nerve? So as you start building a business, and you build a business and it creates great wealth because you help a lot of people that also have a thorn in their arm. You have abundance and you have money and the thorn isn't bothering you anymore. You've got the, the woman of your dreams or the man of your dreams and the thorn is still in your arm, but you've got the apparatus, you're getting good night's sleep, you've got a business around it. And one day you say, you know what? I'm free of this thorn. This thorn does not rule my life anymore. 
But in the meantime, you built your entire identity and your entire life. Everything is based on that thorn in your arm. Everything surrounds that. Or you could remove the thorn and then be truly free of the thorn in your arm. Sit with that analogy for a little while and see if it hits you. And some people don't work with analogies. But if you do work with analogies, I think you understand what I just said and what that book just said. Is that there's so many people out there that are avoiding what they fear. They avoid it. They avoid pain and suffering and they avoid the thing that's inside them. So, for example, for me, let's talk about let's talk about Iron Lynch Potter and what I avoided for a very long time was this fear, this anxiety that I had in me for a long time. And I avoided it for such a long time. And I thought that everything in the external world would help me, especially money. So I I said, okay, I'm going to go pursue money. I'm going to make money my God. I'm going to worship that. And the more money I made, I ended up starting sales when I was about 22 at Good Life Fitness. And I remember the very first sale I did, which kind of got me hooked on sales. I was making 20 bucks an hour. I barely had any money. And I was like, this is really hard. I don't know what to do. I had no skills. And a man called Ken Kilcullen, who was like, he agreed to do a year's worth of personal training. I screwed up all the paperwork. I signed the wrong thing. But he bought $7,700 worth of personal training. I got a 10% commission on that. I remember that day I did the math. I was like, I made $770 today. That's more than what I've made in two weeks. I made in one day. That started my sales journey where I ended up starting making about $1,500 a month, went up to about $2,500 a month, ended up going up to $4,000 a month. Ended up going to about five, six thousand dollars a month at Good Life Fitness. Then I ended up moving to a company called Canada Drives, where I started I started back up about three, four grand a month. And the best month I ever had there was I made fifteen thousand dollars as an employee. So it was about eleven thousand dollars after tax. And I remember thinking that I was like, holy shit, this is it. All the meantime. This anxiety that had been with me since I was about 11, 12, 13, it's it's creeping up. It's creeping up. It's creeping up. It's still there. And I'm exploring. I'm, I'm just keep keep going, keep going, working hard, drinking so much coffee that my eyes are twitching, all of this. And this feeling is getting greater and greater and greater. This thorn that's stuck in my arm is getting greater and greater and greater. And then I moved to selling vehicles, which was about two and a half years ago. My very first month there, I made about $8,000, but as a contractor, I was like, whoa, this is cool. Next month, I made about $12,000. The most amount of money I've ever made selling vehicles that my business made, I'm a contractor, right? But it was $37,000 in a month. And... In, during that time, the, the anxiety is getting worse and worse and worse and worse. It's getting, I'm starting to, there was a point where I was vaping a lot. I was out of vaping and I was drinking coffee and it was just like this manic kind of thing that was going on. Thinking that, oh, and I would get depressed if I didn't make a certain amount of money. If I didn't make 15 to 20 grand a month, I'd, I'd be very depressed. I'd be, I'd, it was like I was going to die. It was ho- this horrible feeling inside me. And my good friend, Mr. Marcus Bledinger, my best buddy. I love that man so much. He invited me. He's like, hey, man, there's this this men's weekend that I'm going to invite you to. Just see if it lands with you, see if it's something you want to explore. And I, I kind of learned about, I'd learned about psychedelics in the past. I knew that they could be used as tools. I'd had a little bit of experience with them to look inwards That was about two and a half years ago. Uh, About two years ago, maybe a little bit longer, just after I started selling cars, maybe about eight months after I started selling cars. And that started my journey of 
looking at my thorn, looking at these feelings that I was avoiding, thinking that I could find it in external things, thinking that it was outside of me, thinking that if I make as much money, then it'll get rid of this feeling inside. In fact, it just, there's a lesson in life. The further away you get from alignment, the stronger the emotional feelings you will feel. And that's the stronger you are more, you're more inclined to be involved in addiction and things like that because you're trying to numb yourself from your soul being out of alignment. So that's what was happening with me. It was like, oh, cool, you can make all this money, but I'm just going to make the feeling worse. You can keep avoiding, you can keep running away until you stop and look at the thorn in your arm. Well, the apparatus, all that stuff, like the analogy I gave from this book, it was that's my personal experience with it. And that's why I hope you listening to this can really um, hear that I'm as, I'm, as, I'm as authentic as you can get. I'm, it's, uh, it's hard to talk about this stuff sometimes because that thorn still comes up sometimes. It's still, it's like I removed the thorn. But it's like the scar is still there almost. It's still there. And I watch it come in and out of my life sometimes. Like if I have a bad month at work, it's like, oh, there it is. You don't feel safe. It's like, oh, hello, old friend. So started this journey of really looking inwards. And it's led me to this beautiful place where I am today that the thorn isn't there anymore. I removed the thorn. It's like I got addicted to my own thorn in me. I built my entire life around it, avoiding the thing that you should look at, your anxiety, your fear. I, I used to sweat so much underneath my armpits. It was like this manic sweating, and I would try to cover it up. So I, I would buy sweat-proof shirts so I wouldn't sweat through shirts. I had this pad underneath my arm that would like absorb sweat. And sometimes I would sweat so much that I would sweat through that. It's just, that's the perfect analogy. It's like, rather than being like, hey, man, like, why are you manically sweating so much? Where is this fear coming from? It's like, let's just cover it up and, and pretend it's not there. It's like that thorn analogy. So it's exactly what it is. And I see so many people down to... Even the partner they choose, they might be like, you know, I'm just waiting to find the perfect person. The perfect person that doesn't bring up my stuff. The perfect person that doesn't show my insecurities and my fears. So I'm just waiting for the right one. What if you're avoiding the thorn that's within you? because you're waiting for the most perfect curated person or the most perfect curated job, just so you feel safe all the time, just so it doesn't touch on the thing that you're avoiding. Very interesting. This is Frank. He's a spiky boy. I imagine it's funny. I'm talking about this. This is the cactus I got recently. I don't know why I called him Frank, but that's his name. Hey, look at it, he's full of spikes. And I'm just talking about this thought analogy. And it's just like, I imagine that a lot of people will just, they, they kind of look like this. They put have all these thorns on the outside to keep things away that will hurt them or trigger their stuff. Their stuff will get triggered. They don't want to deal with it. They don't want to look at it. So they end up trying to, put all these things on the thorns to make sure they don't spike themselves or spike other people around them so they feel safe. So this episode is really an invitation for you listening to this. And like, hey, like some thorns, I think we have thorns, not a thorn. There's thorns, plural. And there's things that we are avoiding in our life looking at. There's things that make us very angry. There's things that make us very sad. There's things that disgust us. There's some people that people think that somebody else who's different than them is wrong. There's tire religions based around it. There's people that hate gay people. There's people that hate black people. There's people that hate Asian people. There's hate and there's disgust and there's all that everywhere. 
And that is an invitation for that person. Not that a lot of those people ever take this invitation, but it's an invitation for that person. It's like, well, why does that bother you so much? You think it's so wrong. Have you explored why a black person just existing bothers you so much? It's it's very interesting. That is the thorn in that those people, the hate that you feel for anybody. I mean, there's definitely wrong in the world. There's wrong in the world. I'm not saying like, for example, somebody who's wanting to hurt children. That's wrong. There's no way that's like, oh, well, maybe you can accept those people. I can accept that somebody who's hurting little kids in a sexual or abusive way, I can accept that they're a human being. I can accept that. And I can accept that maybe they've got a lot of trauma and they've got a lot of things that has led them to that point. And maybe they're just trying to do that to themselves because whatever. I can see that. But... I also think it's wrong. And I also think that we don't need people like that in the world. We don't. That's my opinion. And you can have your own opinion on that particular issue, but that's my fucking opinion. And I can get passionate about it. And I, it's like, do I need to explore why I think that's disgusting or why I think that's wrong? No, because that's, that's, my, that's my morals and that's my beliefs and that's what I know to be true for me. But it's more of the it's more of the things like another person's skin color, another person's sexual orientation. They're the things that really, for some people, that really bothers them. And they have this illogical hate. Or it could be something smaller for you. It could be something like, you know what, I just don't like being around crowds. So I avoid being around crowds. I got this thorn on my arm. So I avoid people touching it because the crowd touches the thorn. It's another invitation. Life is constantly inviting you for, to look at yourself, but a lot of people don't see it as an invitation. They see it as something to avoid. And that's the thing. That if you can reframe your perspective around some of these things, you can start looking at these invitations that life is showing you to look at yourself. Anything that bothers you, anything that makes you overly sad, or takes away from your peace. Anything that takes away from your peace consistently is an invitation to spend time with and learn to love about yourself. So anyway, what is your thorn in your life? What is your thorn in your life? Or thorns? Love you guys. Hope you got something out of this episode. And if you haven't read this book, The Untethered Soul, by Michael A. Singer. Highly recommend it. It's a really great book. Quite an easy read. I'm reading it and I was listening to it for a bit. I haven't been listening to it lately, but I'm gonna, probably going to catch up listening to it. Whatever, whatever your learning style is, highly recommend it. Great, great, great book. So I love you guys. I'll see you next week. I got some big guests coming up, which I hope you enjoy. We'll talk to you soon. Bye.